From one in-state battle to another, we continue tonight on ESPN, the Battle of Joyce. It is Seton Hall at the Rutgers Athletic Center taking on the Scarlet Knights. The fans are ready, including the Seton Hall fans who got the Euchre seats here in the sold-out Brown Center tonight. Mike Tirico along with Len Elmore. You know Seton Hall gave Syracuse its first loss. Maybe the biggest win since P.J. Carlissimo left Seton Hall. So now you're thinking you're at an all-time high. Is there a letdown possibility? Lenny, you think it's a good time to be playing an in-state rival? Certainly. There's always a tendency to let down when you've had a big win. Uh, you know, obviously, Michigan State against Purdue after that big UConn win. But the bottom line is that there are too many aspects here that don't allow that. The in-state rivalry, obviously, this crowd going crazy. You also have the familiarity factor. These right. two teams have guys who played against each other in the summer league, so they want the last word. They want to have something to talk about this summer. Seton Hall's been the talk lately. They're 16-4, and four, moving up in the Big East. This is the team with a bullet in the conference. Shaheen Holloway and Remus Kalkanis in the backcourt, along with Darius Lane, the reasons why. But Holloway, the senior point guard, one assist shy of a triple-double against Syracuse. No Charles Mang starts at center. The freshman Samuel Dellenbear missed the team bus. Should play later on. I want you to watch Todd Billett, who is the freshman point guard for Rutgers. He, like Holloway, a Jersey guy, is going to have to battle one of the best senior point guards in the conference. Billett's a freshman, but he's come on of late. Watch the turnover number, which has come down lately. No senior start for Kevin Bannon, who at age 42 has been a college basketball head coach for 18 years. Many of them in Division Three. Of course, Tommy Amaker is on the Seton Hall side. Rutgers in white, Seton Hall in blue. Tim Higgins will toss it. John Cal and Will Bush are the other officials. 23 miles separate Seton Hall and Rutgers campus. It's a good in-state rivalry. Their only meeting of the year. And Seton Hall will get the ball first. There is Tommy Amaker in his third year as well, age 34 and led this team to the landmark victory in the Amaker era here at Seton Hall. The victory at Syracuse. Remus Kalkanis threw it away, and it will go to Rutgers. Well, so far, a good start for Rutgers. The first order of business for them is to make sure that Seton Hall doesn't get off to a quick start. Kevin Bannon told us today that he wants to be able to stay in this ball game and keep it close initially. That way, his guys will relax and also that way, Seton Hall may wind up pressing, particularly from the three-point area. Eugene Dabney, redshirt freshman pivot, 12 to shoot. Dante Jones fires. And hit the shot clock. Jones, a good outside shooter at 41%. He's seventh in the conference in scoring at 16 per game. He leads Rutgers in points. Rutgers still in the man-to-man. -man. Shaheen Holloway is the guy, though, that they have to focus on. You take a look at the defense stepping out, trying to slow his penetration possibility. And Darius, Jones, uh, Darius Lane being picked up a long way from the goal by Dante Jones, and Jones is called for the personal foul. Not going to give number 30 a lot of room to shoot tonight. Well, they certainly aren't. I mean, Seton Hall is second in the conference in three-point shooting. You see Rutgers extending their defense, making sure that Darius Lane, in particular, doesn't get any open looks from there. Again, trying to keep Seton Hall from getting that quick start and gaining confidence. Dante Jones will go chase Darius Lane again. Here is Lane coming off the screen. They try to work it down low for Charles Manga. It was covered. Manga touches outside the arc. 17 to shoot, and Holloway directs them. Watched here by Jeff Greer. And this is a good job by Shaheen Holloway. Tried to run the set, then he backs it out, makes a call. Morton's shot is an air ball to Lane, who knew the shot clock did not expire, or did not reset because the ball missed the rim. He missed, and the Scarlet Knights get a chance to score first. Two good defensive trips by Rutgers. Jeff Greer, his brother Ricardo Greer, star for Pittsburgh. Dabney is fouled. That will be the first on the freshman Greg Morton. Well, Mike, we talked about at the beginning of the telecast an emotional letdown by Seton Hall. In fact, you look at both teams, the way they're playing defense, a little over-aggressive. I think the emotion is in the opposite direction. Both teams are sky high here. They've got to be able to settle down and relax a little bit. Jones feeds Kent inside who is small but tough. 
and Manga took it away from him and knocked it out off of 44 and White. Well, that was a great job by Manga staying on his feet that time and keeping his hands up. You take a look right here, Rashad Kent, two feet in the paint, and there's the double. Greg Morton comes over to help, but a nice job by Manga. Holloway got free at the free throw line. He missed the jumper. Todd Billet on the push. Four Rutgers, 2.15 in. No scoring. Billet got a step and found Dabney. He got within his range for the first points of the night. Eugene Dabney, the freshman out of Birmingham, Alabama. Nice job by Dabney. Totally under control. Allowed the defense to reveal what it was he could take. Lane working baseline. Good hustle by Dante Jones. Rutgers in this building plays better. The record doesn't show it, but in big games, the Scarlet Knights are a tough out on campus. You said that before, didn't you? Somewhere. I've heard that someplace <laughs> before. That would be ESPN, the magazine. <laughs> Lenny, great retention from the November basketball preview issue. Oh, you know, I have this little booklet where I save all the great quotations. <laughs> <laughs> you are along there with George Washington and Dr. King. Thank you. Know. Yeah, Daphne with the rebound. <laughs> Rutgers will get a fresh shot clock. Don't leave Greer alone. Kent rolls to the goal. Holloway, no numbers. But a goal alone. Shaheen Holloway. Well, that's the guy that makes Seton Hall go. Tommy Amber told me this morning that his team's success begins and ends with Shaheen Holloway. Not so much with numbers, but in the way he runs their offense. That time, great recognition. Oh, uh, hit the nice speed. Put it in a foul for Jeff Greer. Speaking of great recognition, you know, nice job here on the back door. You take a look right here. There's Greer. He's going to take it back door. As soon as the overplay comes, watch Calcanus go for the fake. Well, didn't have a chance to see that, but a little bit of a ball fake. Calcanus stepped into the passing lane, and Greer goes back door. Greer missed the free throw. Holloway couldn't finish on the other end, but Manga will go to the line and shoot. Dabney fouled him. Good second effort by Seton Hall on the offensive glass. Again, if you uh, didn't catch it at the top, Manga, the sophomore from Cameroon, is starting in place of Samuel Dellenbear, the seven-foot freshman shot blocker. D'Alembert, late for the team bus, and Tommy Amaker penalizing the freshman with a seat on the bench, and this is a seat Hall team already without one of its top six performers, Gary Saunders, remains suspended. Third game of a team rule suspension for the senior. But what a luxury Tommy Amaker has, a 6'10 sophomore who's still learning the ball game, but certainly can make some contributions. He steps right in. Now on the push, on Calcanus. No official timeout. All even at four. Which sports center do you watch? Mornings. All even at four here in New Jersey. Seat Hall coming off the great win over Syracuse on Monday night. The Hall had a double-digit lead. Syracuse fought back. Good tenacity. And Deshaun Williams a save to a Tom Thomas who will find the point guard, Jason Hart. Syracuse took the lead late, but here's the key hoop. It was Darius Lane, the sophomore, after the Holloway penetration, knocking down the three. Seton Hall held Syracuse off in the last possession. Tommy Amaker's team handing the Orange their first loss in the season, but a great performance from Lane and Holloway on Monday night. Well, certainly those, those two guys really work well as a tandem, and, and that's the thing we talk about with Shaheen Holloway, that classic point guard play. He pushes the ball to explore the defenses. He'll run the offense, but when the time starts running down, he'll penetrate and create. That's how they got their home shot on. Dante Jones hit the deck hard after missing. Seaton Hall's last foul when we went to break was on Remus Calcanus, and that is his second. So Ty Shine joins Shaheen Holloway. Two point guards by trade who have played together the last a half dozen games or so and have performed well when on the floor at the same time. And this is Shine, number O, and he traveled. That time he got trapped in no man's land. 
And you got to make better decisions when you come right into the ball game. You see Remus Kalkanis right there on the bench with two fouls. Seton Hall really hurting without him. That's a hot player right now. Averaging about 20 points in his last three Big East Player of the Week this week. He was Big East Player of the Week. Darius Lane, 30, was the Big East Rookie of the Week. Kent tries to go baseline on Mango. Todd Billick, quick release. Dabney pushed off. That'll be two on the Rutgers big man. Yeah, so that's an early foul trouble for two starters. And that's definitely a bad habit that a lot of big men have. If you keep your hands up above your shoulders, you really don't get called for push-offs. And they're down below. There's a natural tendency to put your hands in your opponent's back. The fan reaction is to the insertion of Starbucks. <laughs> Joel Salvi. He is absolute caffeine. He comes in the game and provides immediate enthusiasm, and the student body here at Rutgers has reacted to the, I was going to say, well quaffed, but I don't know if that would define as well quaffed. Uh-oh, you're showing the generation gap there, Michael. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if that's just... <laughs> it's a distinct look. We love Joel. He's a very energetic player. If you haven't seen him, just keep an eye on him for a minute or so. Constant motion and energy. He definitely provides a jump. There's no question. Darius Lane. Nobody has hit more three-pointers in the Big East this year. That's 61 now for Lane. Seton Hall. The three-point edge. Jones couldn't find the handle. Got it to Salvi. Lane the rebound. Two-point guards. Couple of guys who can push it for you. Holloway, who scored so much when he was a freshman. His point production came down, but his understanding of basketball has skyrocketed in return. And his effectiveness has increased as well. He'll put double figures on the board for you, but it also gets you double figures, assists, and even rebounds. So every element of his game has really benefited from his understanding over the years. Rutgers has been dry for the last three minutes. It is Kent backing in on Mango. Dabney, Kent, and Greer with field goals for the Rutgers six. It's a one point. Seton Hall lead. Three of the players who would normally be in the first six rotation for Tommy Amaker not on the floor for different reasons. Dallin Bear late for the team bus. Gary Saunders suspended. And Calcanis with two fouls. On the three. The shot clock didn't reset, but I think it should have. Will Bush is stopping the game here to say that the shot clock should have reset. Ball hitting the rim is the reset on the clock. Kevin Bannon with some questions. And it wasn't the right answer either. <laughs> Not for Kevin. The youngest active coach with 300 or more wins. He has 321 at age 42. All those years at Trenton State, Division III school, was the national runner-up. Took his team to the NCAA tournament and got to the championship game with Trenton State. Then eight years at Ryder. He's a Jersey guy through and through, including his playing days at St. Peter's. First shot in the game for Al Harris, the freshman from Hollywood, Florida, off the mark. And Billet brings it back for the Scarlet Knights. The Rutgers defense doing a nice job of forcing Seton Hall to go back door and vice versa. Both teams really overcome the passing lane. Salvi the rebound of the Billet miss. The nice find inside. Flores. Well, we told you Joel Salvi comes in and injects energy into the Rutgers attack that time on the offensive glass not only does he make a great play to get possession but he makes an even better play in finding the open man Rutgers back on top after the Luis Flores hoop Greer not giving Lane much room outside the arc Holloway left free got his man up in the air good recovery defense by the Knights seven to shoot Harris, who was 5 of 5 from the field, a career-high 10 
in the Monday victory at Syracuse. And that was just great patience by Seton Hall. They knew the clock was running down, didn't panic, continued to play heads-up basketball on the penetrating dish. Flores, Greer, Salvi, Billet, and Kent for five on the floor for Rutgers. in tight quarters there. Good defense by Seton Hall. Five on the shot clock for Greer. The junior from the Bronx, Cardinal Hayes High School, has a couple of field goals. Leads the Scarlet Knights with four of their ten. Now watch the defense played by Rutgers. They're really stepping out in the pass lane, forcing Seton Hall to try and beat him off the dribble. That time Darius Lane got smart. You know, if I can't get off my shot, let me put it on the floor and make these guys play you see some of the complete game of Lane. Sophomore set out for academics last year. Kent inside. He's had trouble getting that shot off. Fans behind the basket where the students sit. Wanted a foul. Bill advised pass by Holloway. Bill has no one with him. Little classic point guard play on the Rutgers end by Billet. Todd Millett pushed the ball up, recognized he had some numbers on an open shot. That's what you have to do, explore the defense. We go seesaw, the lead has changed hands on each of the last five field goals. Nice job by Greer in defending Lane. Holloway takes Billett to the baseline. The follow! Harris couldn't finish. Flores came away with the board for Rutgers. There's the push. Recognize there are no numbers. You call the play. A lot of the offense started with the pass right to that spot. Salvi there now. Tipped out by Lane. It will be Rutgers ball with 19 to shoot after this official timeout. Joel Salvi's come in and added some enthusiasm and offense. This feed inside to Flores. One of the reasons RU is up by one. Uh, all right, Rich, uh, interesting story there. We'll keep an eye on that. Rich and Jay Billis with more details at halftime. Certainly some video on SportsCenter after the game. Here it is, Rutgers leading Seton Hall by one. In-state rivalry in New Jersey. Two schools separated by 23 miles. Two to shoot on the clock. Rutgers doesn't know it. And a shot clock violation. And you really got to wonder why Rutgers possibly didn't discuss it or the players didn't remember it was discussed in the huddle after the timeout. You come out of a timeout, you know you should know how much time is on the clock and be able to recognize the, the score and the time situation. That's just the second Rutgers turnover and a blocking foul is called on Salvi as he got in the way of Morton. The Joel's first. Well, you take a look at the play right here. There's Salvi set in pretty nice position. Now, Tim Higgins called the block because he was right there on the baseline. The outside official began to signal an offensive foul. Kevin Wilkins has checked in the game, 42. And Remus Calcanus is at the top of your screen, back in there with two personal fouls. Calcanus, quick trigger, off the bench, in rhythm, a three. Hey, you got to find that guy. We just finished telling you, averaging 20 a game over the last three and burning it up from three-point range. Falcane has put Seton Hall back on top. 14-12. Jones got close. Beat Falcane this defensively. Dante Jones so strong, particularly his upper body. He gets in the paint against guys his size. He's able to muscle his way to the basket. Alvitas Tunis, 50, is checked into the Rutgers lineup and finds the ball in his hands. Seton Hall turnover. Billet locates a shooter. It's a three from Jones. Paul protects and got put. That time Rutgers a little bit too aggressive. Once once Calcanus got possession, that was the time to drop back, pick up your men. Take a look here. Nice play inside. Look at the strength inside, the upper body strength on the jump stop. Head and shoulders past his man to grab his momentum through. And then he horses it up. <laughs> he gave the foul to Luis Flores, his first. Bernardo Brown's first appearance in the lineup. He's chasing Holloway, bottom left of your screen. 
Brown, a junior out of Flint, Michigan, a junior college transfer. Here is Lane. <clears throat> Rattle the cage. And Brown at the point and on the push for the Scarlet Knights and out of control. Hard to come into a game with a lot of emotion and fit right into the tempo, and Brown struggled there. Well, that time, Renato Brown did have a lane to the basket. I think it was a Seton Hall defender that got a piece of the ball as he made his move. He got open. He just lost the handle. Well, the fan reaction for Samuel D'Alembert, who has checked in the seven-footer for Seton Hall, set the first 12 minutes of this game because he missed the team bus. And who's second in the Big East in block shots comes in with the game all tied at 14. Ty Shine, the power dribble. And he'll try to complete a three-point play. Well, you talked about the value of a Ty Shine. Got great experience last year uh, during an injury-plagued year for Shaheen Holloway. Shine was able to step in and play the point. This is what he brings. Good offensive player. Probably a better shooting guard than a point guard. And once again, Seton Hall recognizing that the defense is trying to take away the um, passing lanes. They're putting it on the floor and making things happen. You see the celebration. Yeah, a little bit of chest bumping. Shine, a 68% shooter, missed it. And Rutgers will come back down and try to tie it again. That's a two-point ball game. I don't know if we need all that chest bumping right now. Eight minutes left, first quarter. Greer off the screen. Jeff Greer has seven quick ones. Nice job by Salvi to step out, taking away a little screen and roll action. First touch of the night for D'Alembert. Here's a turnover. Brown showed great hops to get up and get it. Greer runs to the corner. Down Salvi a half second too late. It's Rutgers ball after this official timeout. The Scarlet Knights. Four and six in the conference. Looking for their biggest win of the year at home tonight. Men. They've been playing for 84 years, but as you see, Seton Hall leads the series 1916. Just a 36 meeting, but Kevin Bannon tells us about the intensity between these two rivals, separated by about a 25-minute drive. I mean, this game with Seton Hall is uh, really special to our fans, and I think our players get really charged up for it, and I'm sure theirs do as well. They all know each other so well. They play summer league ball together. Many of them played, you know, through school together, you know, AAU ball, et cetera. So it does make it uh, kind of unique and, and I think a fun rivalry. And Todd Dillon, who grew up in the state of New Jersey, understanding this rivalry, puts Rutgers on top by four. Well, you give Rutgers a lot of credit for the defense that they're playing. They're getting up in Seton Hall's face. They say, we're going to have you beat us off the dribble, not with the open shot. Very few catch-and-shoot shots for Seton Hall. Everything has been put it on the floor, take it to the basket, and Rutgers will take their chances. You know, you may think of Calcanus. There's a kid from Lithuania. What does he know about Rutgers, Seton Hall, and the rivalry? But what Coach Bannon was talking about he played in the Jersey Summer League like a lot of these guys, so they saw each other all summer and will see each other in the ensuing summer as Kent is turned away by the seven-footer D'Alembert. Well, Rashad Kent usually has his way inside using that wide body, but he didn't really get a body on D'Alembert that time. Left too much room. Ty Shine did a nice job. D'Alembert on the switch with the little pick set. Rashad Kent down to the big man, or to the small man, I should say. And Shine was surprised to see Kent, launched it over him, and got the Rutgers lead down to two. I tell you, it is definitely a battle between Miles and, uh, and Greer. Both of these guys guarding each other on each end. A lot of bumping and grinding, overplaying, although Shine is on Greer now. Seton Hall has wised up quick to that feed from the post. Lane changing directions. Changing lanes like a driver on the Jersey Turnpike with no regard for anybody around him. That's what, that's what I meant, Lane, not Miles. Holloway. That's in the cylinder. No basket. 
basket. Waved off by John Cal. Take a look there. Oh, I don't know about that. Looked like the ball may have been inches off. That was an excellent play by Dallenbear to get there. Good timing. Depends upon the angle. Obviously, we had the right angle. Jones from 18. And Rutgers is hitting his field goals now. That's four trips in a row the Scarlet Knights have connected. It's their largest lead of the night. A half dozen. Not only are they hitting the field goals, it's obvious they're getting the open look. Seton Hall's defense has slowed down. They were matching Rutgers in this belly-to-belly -belly D, possession by possession. Now it seems as though they've backed off, and Rutgers taking full advantage. Salvi heads, left Harris free. We are on the run. That's offensive. That was the time to get the ball in Billet's hands. Billet was standing in the middle of the floor, mm -hmm. awaiting a pass that never came. And Jeff Greer, in his haste to get to the hole, really didn't make a good decision. Billet pats him on the butt and said, okay, next time. You take a look here. Head was up, but he saw shine all the way. Thought he could beat him to the spot. Never did. He's thinking, I'm 6'5". What are you, six foot shine? I can elevate over you. But you got to get there first. That's 17 fouls on Rutgers, so Kent does a very nice job to take it away from D'Alembert. Salvi faked the three. He's two for four from behind the arc. There's the cut. Greer! D'Alembert the block with the foul. Plenty, they keep running the same stuff offensively. The pass to the top of the lane, the backdoor cuts, and Salvi and Kent are making nice passes. Well, we saw Kalkanis earlier, and right here, the reason Greer got so open is because Shine is turning his head. When the ball goes into Greer at the top of the key, Shine turns and follows the ball, loses sight of his man. Any coach will tell you, when you're playing defense on the wing, you have to be able to see ball man, utilize the peripheral vision. That time, Shine focused both eyes on the ball and lost his man and paid for it. One more for Greer after D'Alembert's first personal foul. Jeff Greer. Leading a 12-2 Rutgers run. Well, Big 12 officials and buzzer beaters have had their run-ins. Remember the uh, Texas Tech game earlier this year. And more problems there. There'll be no problems or shot clock violations in Las Vegas when Jimmy Smith will have NYPD Blue to take care of us. At the 2000 ESPYs, the greatest night in sports live from the MGM Grand in Vegas. It begins with the SB pregame at 7.30. Monday night on ESPN, the 8th annual SB Awards. We look forward to the MGM Grand. And look at the attention that Lane, Darius Lane, has been getting. And he still has the presence of mind to find his teammate down on the block. Al Harris with his second field goal. Puts a little bit of a short circuit in that Rutgers run. Seton Hall, down six, down eight. Joel Salvi steps to the edge of his range and knocks one down. And let's go back to what we talked about at the beginning of the telecast. We talked about an emotional letdown. I can tell you right now, with this atmosphere, Seton Hall is not suffering a letdown. They're being melted down by the Rutgers defense. It's Harris again. Boy, Al Harris, I guess he liked whatever he ate on the way up to Syracuse. <laughs> Al Harris had attempted just 20 field goals all year and made 14 of them coming into the Syracuse game. He's made seven in the last 55 minutes. There's nothing like confidence. Boy, you're a player and you get out there, you know you have talent. Once you get the feeling, it's hard to shut it off. Greer runs to an open space, elevates over and comes to the line. And when you're hot, it seems like it never shuts off. Jeff Greer on the baseline, once again, being forced to put it on the floor, forcing the issue. And he's a slasher. He can fit through an awful lot of small openings there. Slender, wiry, with an excellent touch. He already, Len, has a dozen points. 13 and 15 in his last two games. 
And Tommy Amaker's team, biggest deficit of the night now. Holloway and Shine with Lane, Harris, and D'Alembert. Holloway tries to take over. Followed his own miss. And Kent gets the rebound. Seton Hall is shooting at a low percentage from the field. And they are the eighth best team in the conference in field goal percentage. But they're below their 44% average here tonight. So the difficulty that Seton Hall is having on the offensive end is they're getting the opportunity to drive and penetrate, but there's no one to dish to because there's no help side from Rutgers. Rutgers takes its timeout. We'll step out as well. Scarlet Knights up nine. You'll see three of the 13 from the Big East tomorrow. Len will join Dan Schulman for Pittsburgh and West Virginia at 7 Eastern. Panthers are playing some good ball. And then at 9, the Orange men bounce back from the season's first loss. Very tough place to play, Freedom Hall, against the Cardinals of Louisville. You'll see Etan Thomas in that game take on a fellow senior in Tony Williams, who at 6'8 can step out. He's improved his three-point shooting from 33 to 40% this year. That's doubleheader tomorrow night on ESPN. Bill it out of the timeout. Missed the triple and Reggie Garrett, first action of the night. A rebound for the junior from Somerset here in Jersey. Seton Hall looked to throw a little curveball playing the zone that time. Rutgers really not prepared for it. Lane lost Bill it. Garrett's attempt to save takes him up to visit the Patriots. Rich Eisen, Jay Billis at the Courtyard by Marriott Halftime Report. We'll check out what's going on in the top 25. The Dukies are in action, trying to keep that four-game lead in the ACC. And the Buckeyes with a tough one against Iowa. Plus the latest in that Iowa State-Missouri game that's coming up on the Courtyard by Marriott Halftime Report. Seton Hall playing kind of a 1-3-1 zone. Again, looking to cover the wing shooters, but certainly to make sure there are no more back doors. The thing that's plagued them throughout this game. Shot clock is at eight. Dante Jones can do it off the dribble. So can Greer. Great rebound by Kent. His fifth of the half. He wants Salvi to shoot when left alone. Here he comes. Good pass to Kent. Drew the foul on Reggie Garrett. When you get the ball in the teeth of the zone, you create all sorts of problems for the back line. There's Salvi right there. Again, he gets into the paint. Look at the defense close on him, and he finds the open man. And Rashad Kent can handle all of that. I mean, he's done a great job working on his body. We were remarking about it today. First thing you said when we walked in this afternoon, Rashad Kent. Yeah, he's got that definition now. Built up his upper body. Last year, he was a little soft around there. Now, he's, he's defined. 6'6", sophomore. Rashad Kent last year shot 66% from the field. This year, 64%. He knows where he has to shoot. And even though he's 6'6", facing usually men that are taller than he is, he has a very nice job around the block. Yeah, he does. He recognizes his role. His role is to clean up on the boards, get the offensive boards, present himself as an outlet down low in the paint. One thing you worry about with him is foul trouble, and he stayed foul free here in the first half. As Rutgers leads by 10 in the final 35 seconds. Shine. Brown could not keep it alive. And going back to the point that I tried to make before the last break, every time Seton Hall tries to penetrate, it's just one defender on the penetrator. Everyone else covers their men. So there's no opening, no outlet for the penetrator to dish to. And there, that's why you see many times when they're dishing the ball off, there's always a white shirt there. Tommy Amaker will use the timeout that he can't take with him. As you know, those five timeouts, each team can only take one. Well, Tommy's team trails by 10. Because of the work of Jeff Greer tonight. Well, Jeff Greer has really exploited the defenses, going back door when overplayed, getting in the triple threat position and stepping up for big jumpers and even on the catch and shoot. He's got tremendous range, as we talked about it before, a great slasher to the basket. You take a look at his numbers tonight. He's really been invaluable on the offensive end, created all sorts of problems for State Seton Hall. 
Jeff Greer has the most experience on this team. He is a three-year starter. I say most experience in terms of number of starts. There are three seniors on this club. Salvi you've seen off the bench. Alvitas Tanis has seen his role diminish. And of the players who really play, most of them are freshmen, sophomores, along with Greer, the junior. So there's not a lot of experience. This is a, a youth mistake-filled season by Rutgers that maybe if there was juniors and seniors in places of the freshmen and sophomores, they'd be 6-4 in the league instead of where they are now. Nine on the shot clock. D'Alembert couldn't handle. Lane bailed him out, stepped back, couldn't knock down the three. When they beat the clock, Greer looked up, saw the clock. Holloway deterred him. That is no shot. That's about the only thing that didn't go right for Rutgers. Scarlet Knights scored 18 of the last 24 here in the half. And Seton Hall, off the big win over Syracuse, finds himself down 10 in an in-state battle as we send it back to Jay Billis and Rich Eisen. All right, thanks. All right, thanks, Mike. So they were David two nights ago. Now they're Goliath. And they're certainly not faring well on this Goliath roll. Seton Hall down at the half to Rutgers, not usually used to being down on the road in the Big East. Well, Seton Hall's 5-1 and one on the road in the Big East, primarily because they've always gotten off to good starts in the game against Syracuse. Seton Hall got up early in the game, so they got to play from ahead, and it's a lot different taking a shot when you're up six, seven points in a ball game than when you're down ten. So this is going to be a real challenge for Seton Hall in the second half when they're com trying to come from behind. They're going to have to deal with game pressure. They're going to have to try to take the crowd out of this ball game if they want to make a comeback in a tough place to play the rack. Sort of glad that last shot didn't go because we don't need any sort of controversy <laughs> at the end of the half as to whether a ball should count or not. We'll get more on that. The madness of the Iowa State-Missouri game and also the first game of our ESPN doubleheader. Ed Cota looking like a football center and feeding his more conventional center against NC State. SPN's exclusive presentation of NCAA basketball is brought to you by Courtyard by Marriott, the hotel designed by business travelers. ESPN's exclusive presentation of NCAA basketball is brought to you by Blue Nile. Education, guidance, and 10,000 certified diamonds. Mike Tarico, Len Elmore, this is a night of uh, strange happenings in college hoops around the country, maybe here in New Jersey too. Rutgers leads Seton Hall by 10. Darius Lane, five straight games with 20 or more, and Len Elmore shut down just five points in the first half. Why? Well, part of the difference is a tremendous team effort in preventing open looks. You take a look at Lane right here. Every time he comes off a pick, there's help. You look at a nice defense there by Dante Jones. And here he receives on the wing. Watch him go beyond the pick, and there's Salvi to step out. No open looks for Darius Lane. Give you a look at the Nasenex halftime stats, and you see Rutgers shot 52% from the field. Neither team great from three. Seton Hall more turnovers than normal. Rutgers control the last seven and a half of the opening half. So here we go, second half. Seton Hall at 16 and four, facing a halftime deficit for the fifth time this year. Greer, an early three. He leads all scorers with a dozen in the first half. Right there, you saw more activity by the Seton Hall defense. They're stepping out and extending the D as well. Paul Canis with three fouls, looking for offense early. Holloway resets with 20 to shoot. Lane, Calcanus, Holloway, the three big scorers for Seton Hall. Ten total in the first half. Holloway will shoot some free throws. Foul <laughs> on Kent is first. There you see the trio that had a terrific performance at Syracuse but has been held in check tonight. Holloway really not able to get a lot of his shots. Calcanus the three fouls. And we showed you what Lane's been up to. And we mentioned it in the first half, and at least it's begun to be true in the second half, although Shaheen Holloway drew the foul. Rutgers is doing a nice job of forcing the ball handler to put it on the floor, take it to the basket, and instead of the help coming, they're covering all the outlets. So it's just one-on-one, -on -one, and Rutgers doing a nice job in their one-on-one -on -one defense. Kevin Bannon's offense has also thrown a wrinkle. Some backdoor stuff. Some of the one-four set that they've run very little of this year. One of the reasons the Scarlet Knights lead by eight. 
Eugene Dabney to Todd Billet. Two freshmen. Dante Jones is a sophomore and he travels. Well, that's a mismatch, at least from the standpoint of Rutgers, to have Dante Jones grab Remus Calcanus out on the wing much quicker. Good first step. Manga tried to get the bump for Holloway. Jones is not giving Lane any room to shoot outside the three-point arc. And that's what we mean by the tremendous man-to-man -man defense. Dante Jones doing it on both ends. Holloway beat Billet. He got two. And that's what Seton Hall is going to have to do. They have to be successful in putting it on the floor and beating their men off the dribble. That's going to force Rutgers to bring help. And when they do that, that's when you get the spot-up jumpers off the dish from the penetration. Greer. Now Eugene Dabney. Watched by Morton. D'Alembert starts this half on the bench as well. The hand to Billet. Todd Billet has seven of the Scarlet Knight 34. He's a freshman out of Christian Brothers Academy, Middletown, New Jersey. Todd's brother Jeff, the ninth all-time leading scorer in Rutgers history. Paul Candace calls out a set play. Holloway, all four for the Hall in the second half. Crashing the glass is Morton. Nice keep alive by the freshman of the Bronx. Playing down the lane. A little more offensive aggression from Seton Hall in the first two and a half minutes. Well, we talked about Rutgers offense. You take a look here. Watch Kent right there. Rashad Kent set the screen. A nice job. And there you hold it right there. Look at the screen there. And look at this man right here. Manga, he gets there too late. And Billet raises up. Manga should be stepping out to prevent Billet from getting that open look. He's too late. And Billet lets him know. The big man make a mistake? <laughs> it happens on occasion. I didn't think anybody over 6'8 got any blame out of you. Remember Manga in there because of D'Alembert, the freshman, second leading shot blocker in the Big East. Calcanis, the great rebound of the miss. D'Alembert missed the team bus. That's why he didn't start the first half. Well, that is 5-0 to start the second half for Seton Hall. And they've taken a 10-point lead down to 5. It's actually 7-2 in the half for Seton Hall. They score five more. Chance to get closer here. You see how far out Seton Hall has to start their offense, how far out Darius Lane has to go to receive. Calcanis ran into Greer trying to cut to the open spot. And on the turnover, it's Rutgers ball. You know, this is a good test of the poise of Seton Hall playing from behind. They're usually accustomed to being, uh, of being ahead at the half. You know, this is where they have to learn how to play within themselves. Not try to do too much. will shoot from out there. Falkane is the rebound. Rutgers hasn't looked very settled in any of its possessions. Seton Hall has. Just getting Falkane back on the floor means a lot. Holloway trapped. Off the screen. That's two for Falkane. Toe on the tape. Rutgers might want to think about a timeout here. It's a 9-2 run. And Kevin Bannon does stop the clock. The Seton Hall is back in it within three. And having Remus Calcanus back on the floor does a lot of little things for this team. Well, he certainly does. He's a senior. He's been through the wars, and he recognizes, again, where to be in waiting for the outlet passes. And that's what we talk about, playing with poise, playing within yourself. Calcanus not trying to do too much, allowing the play to develop. If you ever had the pleasure of being down in Daytona for Speed Week, you know it is a one-of-a-kind week. Our ESPN and ESPN2 coverage will get you underway starting tomorrow. ESPN2 has ARCA and DASH qualifying, 1.30 Eastern. RPM tonight's there all the way through the 20th, covering the Daytona Speed Weeks, capped off by the 500. For more, log on to ESPN.com, a part of Go Network at Go.com. In front of 8,611, a sellout at the rack. 
technically the Lewis Brown Athletic Center, the Rutgers Athletic Center, affectionately known as the Rack. Where the Scarlet Knights have seen a 10-point lead become three, and Seton Hall a chance to get even closer. Holloway for Tom. Tommy Amaker's got to be pleased with the effort his team has put forth in this second half. Once again, totally under control, Shaheen Holloway allows the play to develop, sees the opening, and with all confidence, drills it. Jones misfired. All 12 points this half from Kalkanis, Lane, and Holloway. The guys held in check in the first half. It's also been one shot and out for Rutgers. They're taking shots without having the board covered. Lane on the step. It is all going Seton Hall's way. Here's where the youth of Rutgers is really going to tell the tale. We'll see if they can maintain their poise, losing this lead. You see it's obviously a 14-2 run. Salvi tries to end it. Holloway the rebound. He had a great rebounding game with 11 up at Syracuse on Monday. And Shaheen, the stutter step, and a blow by. Kevin Bannon seems totally out of whack on the offensive end, taking shots without having a white shirt in the paint. And on defense, no one really steps up to help. He's going to have to rethink that defensive strategy. Jones lost his man and got a huge three for Rutgers. What was that? Horrible pass. He takes it here. Greer, the feed to Kent against Mango. Salvi. Nice spin. And Kent will get two free ones. I tell you, Rashad Kent is so effective when he receives on the low block and he gets that low center of gravity. Watch when he receives down low, and now he gets down as Salvi flattens out to the wing, to the corner. Now watch Kent go down. Nice little drop step. Gets his head and shoulders past his man, and with that strength and his momentum going to the basket, it's really tough to stop. They played last week. I hope in the Big East tournament that we get a uh, game between Rutgers and Miami so we can watch Rashad Kent and Mario Bland go at it in the pivot. Those are two small, wide pivot men who overcome their lack of height relative to the man they're playing almost every trip down the floor. They're fun to watch. Well, they're definitely two nimble, strong guys. It's almost like being in Vegas and watching two dancing bears going at it at one of the floor shows. <laughs> the dancing bears. This for the time. Official timeout. Shaheen Holloway, nine quick points to start the half, has brought Seton Hall back to all even. Okay. Wow. Uh, a wild night in the Big Ten with the big, big victory for Iowa over Ohio State. Remember, you'll see Ohio State, Michigan State next week on ESPN. And both teams knocked off on the road in back-to-back -back nights. Harris here gives Seton Hall a two-point lead. You talk about Iowa, the impact that Steve Alford's made on that program. That's so neat. That Ohio State wins on the heels of a Kansas win as well. So ranked teams fear the Iowa Hawkeyes. Ty Shine, the steal and the foul. Well, it's kind of the, the new group of coaches. Uh, we have two of them here tonight. We saw Quinn Snyder's Missouri team battling for first place in the Big 12. We have Tommy Amaker and Kevin Bannon, two coaches in their third years at these programs. Amaker 34, Bannon age 42. And this new generation of coaches that are coming in that uh, communicate with today's players, understand the game. Kalkanis uh, draws the foul on Rashad Kent. That will be Kent's second. I'll tell you, vast difference in the way Seton Hall is attacking the basket. In the first half, they were a little tentative when they drove to the hoop. They were looking for people to try to throw outlet passes to. Hence, they fumbled it or they threw it and it was, it was intercepted. Now, they're just going straight to the rack, taking the contact, and hoping that they get to the line or make the shot. 
One more for Calcanus, who has been a tremendous free throw shooter within the Big East. We have 32 of 34 in the conference for Calcanus. And this is Seton Hall's largest lead of the night at four. Six and change gone by second half. Mike Tirico, Lynn Elmore at Rutgers. Billet bounced it off of Manga. Comes down in the hands of Dante Jones, who was fouled by the sophomore, Charles Manga. Well, Manga got trapped out in an area where he's not all that effective. You know, the better judgment would have been just to be able to kind of leave enough room so that you can get a hand up and bother Jones but not let him get by you. Just the way he's playing Salvi right now. You should wingspan to your advantage defensively? Oh, absolutely. You're going to at least present the illusion that you're broad enough that you can't go around using that, that spread arm. Jones, the dribble and the pull-up. Calcanus all over the rebound. What a difference. Remus, Calcanus, and Holloway together have meant for Seton Hall in this half. Calcanus running around trying to get open. Manga lucky to make the catch, and Calcanus on the bounce. I talked to him before the game, and I said, you're driving the ball more this year. I said, did you get sick of hearing guys yell shooter every time you caught the ball? That's what would happen. They respected the outside shot, knew he wouldn't drive, and he's taking some guys, when the opportunity presents it, off the dribble this year. Although I can't believe guys get tired of hearing their name called shooter. <laughs> it is a six-point Seton Hall lead. Let's see if Rutgers can get settled on this end. It's a lot of one-on-one -on -one and very stagnant offense. Still at a three. Seton Hall Rutgers shooter rebounder <laughs> Falcon has got them both there and Seton Hall reset Holloway's on the floor but shine running the show to start this trip Fifteen on the shot clock here is the senior Holloway watched by the junior Renardo Brown Now Holloway wants to take it himself. Clock's running down. Here's where you create. Tried to bounce off the double, but a shot clock violation. Ooh, that dangerous play there. Harris and Salvi were tied up. Nobody was given ground, but uh, they are very sportsmanlike in getting out of the dangerous situation. Official timeout, the Hall by a half dozen. Hey, what? Seton Hall up by six after battling back in the second half. And the way they did it was pretty much a team effort. Playing with a lot of confidence. They were in, been given the drive and they took it. Crashing the offensive board, then the open looks. And every guy's done it. Holloway, Calcanus. You take a look at Holloway again. And even Al Harris gets into the, uh, in the action right there. Remus Calcanus once again exhibiting that senior leadership. You take a look at the numbers right here in the second half. Lane Calcanus and Holloway have really stepped it up on the offensive end. They've played with confidence. They've recognized the opportunities as opposed to the first half where they're a little tentative and essentially threw the ball away. Those three averaged 41 points a game when you put all their numbers together. We told you about the 48 that the trio put up in the win at Syracuse. And a much better second half here tonight. See if Rutgers can get it going on the offensive end. 18 to shoot. Joel Salvi, Todd Billet, Rashad Kent posting up. And his last touch by Seton Hall. 11 to shoot. Dan Patrick and Stu Scott come right after the game with Sports Center. Dennis Rodman returns. Isn't that special? We'll uh, have all the NBA and NHL highlights of the night, as well as the college basketball, the upsets, and remembering Derek Thomas. And all of us send our condolences to all the friends and family of one of the NFL's good guys in a timely passing in Miami yesterday. Sports Center after the game. Harris on the put back, and he'll come to the line and shoot. I tell you, it's been about effort in this second half. Not that Rutgers hasn't been putting it forth, but Seton Hall has really 
dug down deeply to find some extra effort, particularly on the boards. Al Harris that time, that's a great illustration of staying with it. Really didn't have anything but his arms to reach and try to get control. The presence of the freshman Harris from Hollywood, Florida, finished his uh, prep school days at Wichenden, Massachusetts. Add some athleticism to the front line, a good rebounding presence. And as we mentioned, the 10 points on the 5 of 5 shooting in the game at Syracuse, followed up by 9 tonight, so he has a chance to equal his career high in back-to-back -back games. And Mike, you said it correctly with regard to his athleticism. On that rebound, he was really out of position, didn't really have his legs under him. All he did was just reach out. And again, that's the kind of effort that you need. Well, here's a guy who scored 25 points all season up until Monday, and he scored 20 in the last two games. 10 here tonight for Harris. This is the largest lead for Seton Hall at eight. Billet, Jones, Greer, Dabney, and Kent. The starting five try to find some offense for Rutgers. And those little bounce passes are being shut off by Seton Hall here in the second half. 10 to shoot. Dabney's alone. Lucky to get the two. He was lucky on the roll, but it was good recognition. He turned and saw the defense laying off of him. He made up the ground rather than settling for the jumper that was probably a bit out of his range. Good point. And you've seen a lot of those, too. <laughs> Especially this year. Jones, who's got the board? Who wants it more? Jones did, because he missed. Greer a team. Kent over the back is third. Oh, a tough call. A lot of bodies banging and battling inside. But we talked about effort. Rutgers stayed in there, continued to keep the ball alive. Just wasn't rewarded. We told you about Kent's foul trouble. All three for him have come here in this half. And you see Rutgers going to let Seton Hall shoot a lot of free throws here in this second half. Lane got trapped in the air. The bailout was Manga. Lane collects and connects. Huge shot. But Darius Lane maintains the momentum for Seton Hall. <laughs> Nine points Seton Hall lead. They trailed by ten at the half. Rutgers has scored but eight since the break. Good defense by Shine from behind on Billet. More blue shirts than white. Here is Lane. foul on Seton Hall. And every once in a while you need a big play to kind of turn your fortunes a little bit. And you take a look here. Nice job by Jones. Stays up in the air. Both guys hung in the air. Jones Woo. never really committed until Lane showed him the ball. Holloway's foul. His second. Will that ignite Rutgers on this end? Shots were coming so easy for Rutgers at the end of the first half. None of those backdoor layups for the Scarlet Knights here. Seton Hall playing its third game in five days. May have shown the effects in the first half, but looks the fresher squad in the second. Sean is going outside. And it will be 17 fouls in the one and one now for Seton Hall. Well, it bears repeating, Seton Hall much more aggressive in this half. Instead of going east-west or sometimes penetrating, looking for the dish man, they're taking it straight to the basket, putting all the pressure on the Rutgers defense. Free throws coming up for Ty Shine. Saturday, ABC's NCAA basketball. Presented by Payne Weber. We saw North Carolina with the victory. They'll take on Wake Forest. And Mr. Elmore underlined, well, not even your next assignment. But Lenny and I will be at the Garden Our Saturday for Villanova St. John's. Check your local listings for the game.
ABC's NCAA basketball presented by Payne Weber. I just want to remind you. I will show up sure at the Garden. Never miss a trip to the world's most famous arena where four weeks from today the Big East tournament will start. No golf in between, Mike. you got to be there. I will be there, I promise. <laughs> Bill at a three. His deep shot's been off. Sign thought he had all ball. John Cal said foul. Fourth team foul on Seton Hall. Rutgers ball out of bounds after this official timeout. Tommy Amaker's team with its largest lead of the night at nine. Oh, back to you, Mike. Look at all that scoring in that one. Here in the Big East, it's Seton Hall and Rutgers, two schools separated by 23 miles. Seton Hall coming off its biggest win in the last half decade, giving Syracuse its first loss of the season. And Lenny, we've seen a tale of two halves. It was Rutgers by 10 at the break, only three field goals in the second half of the Scarlet Knights. What's happened? Well, certainly Rutgers was able to capitalize on a number of things that their defense gave them, particularly points off turnovers, nine points off turnovers. This half, very few Seton Hall turnovers. Rutgers not able to capitalize. And on second chance opportunities, they've been getting their hands on balls, just as you saw there, but not able to convert. Yeah, that's a couple of tries. No points. Lane spots up. Missed the three. Lane, the Big East Rookie of the Week, who scored over 20 in his last five games, has 11 tonight. Jones left alone for three. That was much needed. Boy, I think Dante Jones didn't realize where he was. That was one of the few open looks he's gotten in this second half. No blue shirt around him. Six-point game coming up on seven minutes. Remember, Sports Center after we're done. Shine to Manga. Holloway set to check in. Shine at the point. Lost Billet and connects. Well, that time Shine made him pay for the help. But the bottom line is, you saw the Rutgers defense that time, instead of, as they did in the first half, allowed Seton Hall to drive to the basket and play one-on-one. -on -one. Seton Hall has been very successful in the second half. Rutgers rethought that defense, and now they're stepping up, and they're covering. They're bringing the help. Salvi's only attempted four three-pointers, so didn't try one there. Shot clock at 10. Jones. And Rutgers has been called from outside of the arc. They stay that way. Salve, Salve, good hustle. Looking. Still keeping it alive. They got the timeout call. Jones had the ball. Salvi called timeout. And Amaker says he didn't have possession. Well, that's a good example why this crowd loves Joel Salvi. His ability just to keep things going, keep it alive. He's not pretty, but he's effective. A reminder that Sports Center is on the way with Dan Patrick and Stuart Scott, John Rocker in his favorite city in the world, and Duke trying to continue that ACC streak. As you see, a high-scoring affair with Maryland. Gentlemen to my right, keeping a keen eye on that one in the ACC. Well, I'll tell you, the interesting part about it, we heard that Shane Battier is really going wild from the three-point line, but it seems as though Maryland is doing what I thought a lot of teams should have been doing a long time ago. You know, you got BBC, Battier, Boozer, and Carowell scoring the majority of Duke's points, and a lot of them inside based on quality passing and inside play. If I'm playing Duke and I'm going to lose, I'm going to go down with them beating me from outside. Maryland is one of the few teams in the ACC that has the people that can score enough points to do that. Put up 70-75 with five minutes left in the game. That's right. Duke has been vulnerable to good big men inside, and Lonnie Bax has been playing as well as any big man in the ACC. Here is Jones off the timeout. Holloway back in the game with the save. Al Harris is back on the floor, along with Greg Morton. We have not seen Samuel D'Alembert, who didn't start because he missed the team bus. Did play in the first half. About the 10-minute mark on. I think Jones took a shot in the uh, head. Darius Lane got knocked down, and Jones is going to pick up the foul. And that's his fourth. Well, uh, that's more problems to add to this second-half story that has been completely controlled by Seton Hall. Look at the Scarlet Knights, just 4 of 24 from the field in this half. 
And certainly the points in the paint make a big difference where you were getting backdoor layups in the first half. Seton Hall has really shut that down. They haven't been quite as aggressive in overplaying those wings, and they certainly have been seeing man and ball as they go out and play D on the wings. It's off lane. Rutgers ball as three bodies ended up on the floor chasing that missed free throw. So Jones will stay in with four personal fouls. And he's got the assignment of handling that man, Darius Lane. I'll tell you, though, he's going to be less aggressive on the defensive end and probably more aggressive offensively. Kevin Bannon wants to get as much mileage out of Dante Jones as he possibly can. He can't take him out. He's the only one who sc scored six of the Rutgers 11 here in the second half. It's 11 points in 14 minutes and 40 seconds for Rutgers, which is 12 and 9 coming in. 4 and 5 in the conference, tied for 7. They're 4 and 0 against the bottom teams of the league. 0 and 5 against the upper echelon of the conference. Pointing to tonight to try to get a win over one of the better Big East teams. You look at Al Harris really battling with shot 10 inside. Another reason why Rutgers hasn't been able to get anything in the paint. Shot clock at 7. Billet must force one here. And Seton Hall on the board. Good defensive set for the Seton Hall Pirates. Two men come to Lane who keeps going and got pushed by Joel Salvi. That's nine Rutgers team fouls. Told you about the ABC Saturday slate, our ESPN Saturday College Basketball. Includes NC State coming off its loss and Virginia coming off its loss in ACC competition tonight. Michigan State coming off its loss to Purdue. It takes on Wisconsin. Let's call it Redemption Saturday starting at 7 Eastern on ESPN. For more, log on to ESPN.com. Part of Go Network, Go.com, where you can read the Jay Billis columns, the transcript of the Len Elmore chat earlier this afternoon, among other things. Was your chat good today, Len? Oh, some great questions. I, I hope people keep uh, throwing them out there. I mean, we kind of span the globe as far as the conferences and the individual teams. And you talk about teams, you take a look at the standings right there, Duke running away and hiding. But then there's that log jam right in the middle. And what those teams have to play for right now essentially is when you get to the ACC tournament, you don't want to meet Duke before the finals. <laughs> That's and really what it comes down to. If you're a Maryland, get the win over a team like Duke. That'll help you when you start breaking down the seeds in, in tiebreaker form. Well, also, when you start breaking down those mental barriers, whether or not you can beat a particular team. Even more important, you're right. Seton Hall has lost four games this year. To Connecticut, Miami, Illinois, and George Washington. Lane has missed the front end of the 101 twice. He is a 65% shooter. No excuse when you're a 42% three-point shooter to be just two out of three from the line. Well, that's just a question of focus, maybe a little bit of form, and certainly confidence. When you step up to that line, you got to feel as though you're going to make it every time. Rutgers, ice cold from three. Kent got fouled by Holloway. Well, I'm sure in that timeout, Tommy Amaker spoke to his guys and said, look, you know, Rutgers is a pretty good team. They're at home. They've got this crowd here. They're going to make a run at you. The important thing is that we exercise good judgment on both ends of the floor. And right now, Rutgers is making that run. And Seton Hall, again, creating some silly situations here that are giving Rutgers second opportunities. Quick hitter for Greer. Kent to follow. Oh, Rashad Kent has eight. And here come the fans, the sellout crowd of over 8,000, trying to urge the home team on. Now remember, if this game goes down to the wire, Seton Hall's weakness has been their free throw shooting, only 66% from the line. That could certainly come into play. He took some time off the clock. Now Holloway runs the show. Stein splits the defense. Bill it on the arm. The 10th team foul on Rutgers in the half. And it will be two free throws now for Seton Hall. Two on Billet. Take a look there. Nice job by Greer. And there's Ken on the foul. Not a body on him. I think Ty Shine saw that load coming and said, well, let me step behind just in case he misses. 
Shines missed both of his free throws tonight, a 68% shooter. Hmm. When he mentioned Seton Hall at 66%, that's eighth in the conference. Rutgers is equally as incompetent, 65% from the line. The difference is, though, Rutgers is at home, and there's a tendency to be able to shoot a little bit better on the baskets uh, that you're accustomed to, and when the crowd's on your side. They've missed their last five. Keeping Rutgers in contact. It's within six. Kill it. Almost shook free long enough for a three. And threw it away as he and Jones miscommunicate. Hawkins ahead. Holloway finds Shine filling the lane. Salvi turns it away. They crash the glass, and Joel comes away with it for Rutgers. Good play by Joel Salvi. Just got enough of the ball to keep it from going in and stayed in there to get the rebound. Again, he gives you a lift. You may not see it on the stat sheet. Greer, a three. Who's got the board? Dillett pulled it down. Greer again. Three points, two and a half to go. Next dead ball is an official timeout. Listen to the crowd at the rack. Well, you knew it would be about execution. And as Tommy Amaker told me this morning, and I said it earlier and I'll say it again, it all begins and ends with Shaheen Holloway. Here's the situation right here. Kent, in trying to take that foul, really took himself out of the play, took himself out of the defense and made it that much easier for Holloway to get into the paint. And you see here, that's a very confident young man, understands that he's in control. Tommy Amaker has made it very clear this team will go as far as number 10 takes them. He takes us to the final official timeout with a big old-fashioned three-point play and a six-point seat hall lead. ESPN's exclusive presentation of NCAA basketball is brought to you by TGI Fridays, home of the Jack Daniels Grill. Back at the Rutgers Athletic Center, it is Seton Hall leading by six. Moments away from Sports Center with Dan Patrick and Stu Scott. They'll have all the day's highlights in college basketball. The NHL and the NBA, John Rocker in New York, Dennis Rodman back in the NBA. It's all coming up right after the game on Sports Center. Tommy Amaker, four-year starter at Duke, truly one of the great point guards in Duke history. That's saying a lot. The record for single game, season, and career steals at Duke. His junior year, the Blue Devils, 37-3. In his four years, 108 and 30. Top defensive player in the land in 87, two Final Fours in 86 and 88, and you're smiling because of those shorts. <laughs> right? <laughs> it read my mind. Plus the fact that you look at Tommy's face and he has not changed. Not a drop. Not a drop. We were talking about aging, man. You think about Tommy Amaker, and you were saying some of these coaches that you remember playing. I remember speaking at a camp when Tommy was in high school. Billet was fouled by Holloway. Well, we talked about the assistant coaches. On, on each bench there, you see Maryland has extended its lead on Duke to six now at Cameron with 2.19 to go. Speaking of the ACC, you have Chris Collins on the bench. He's one of the assistant coaches at Duke. At, uh, at Seton Hall, I should say. The Duke connection continues. Here, 143 left. Rutgers down six. Need to take time, make sure it's a good shot. Salvi, fifth three of the year, is good! Just his fifth attempt, his third make. One possession game, 80 seconds. And both teams have to be keen on execution right now, precise execution. That means they've got to be able to get a good look or to get fouled somehow going to the basket. 
Holloway show. Volcanus, stutter step two. More blue shirts than white. Harris put it on the floor and Selby took it away. And that's exactly it, Mike. Harris put it on the floor when he didn't have to. A very bad habit. Timeout, Rutgers. It's instinctive, but it's big man 101, isn't it? Well, certainly Al Harris wanted to try to reposition himself to get to the basket, but instead of using his shoulders and maintaining a strong pivot foot and powering his way up, he wanted to put it on the floor. Joel Salvi, again, he's been the spark, not only on the offensive end there with the three, but certainly on the defensive end. A couple of good blocks, a couple of real important steals. Let's try to put this game in perspective, forgetting the rivalry for the moment, which is hard to do in this atmosphere. A wonderful atmosphere at that. Seton Hall moved to within a game of the conference lead with their victory at Syracuse. Miami is off until a week from tonight and sitting at 8-2. Connecticut won tonight, and you see there's a clear line of delineation in the conference. The top half is UConn on up. Those are the teams that will be battling for NCAA bids and the top five seeds. And then now it's the next level. Who can be the best of that group? Rutgers trying to join Notre Dame at 500 in the conference. Next Seton Hall foul is the one and one for Rutgers. Every Rutgers foul is two Seton Hall free throws. Salvi hit the three on the last possession. They don't need three, but it wouldn't hurt. From Greer. Which saw with this kind of atmosphere, huh? This is terrific stuff. Well, just judging by the way Seton Hall defends this particular play, you got to wonder whether or not they've run out of gas in pushing past their deficit in the first half and going out to a big lead. That time they got really slow to the shooters. Good execution, good ball movement by Rutgers. If you aren't with us at the top, it's a half-hour drive between these campuses. They don't always go after the same kids in the talent-rich New York, New Jersey metropolitan area because of the differences in the schools. Seton Hall Catholic School, Rutgers, a bigger state university. But the kids see each other all the time. Playground balls, summer leagues in the Jersey Shore. So you've got to live with this matchup all year. Tied at 54, shot clock off. Holloway and Shine handle for the hall. Well, you can, you can be sure that as this clock runs down and it's time to execute the play, that Shaheen Holloway is going to try to get it. That time, Billet literally pulls him down. And not allowing Holloway to get the ball back, it's going to be in Shine's hands to run the final play. Lane off the screen. Shine a finger. The rebound, Holloway. Salvi gets it, calls timeout with 1.6 to go. And they may get some more time back on the clock. You talk about effort, and we've mentioned that word over and over, but a tremendous effort by Todd Billett, recognizing that it was going to be Holloway's ball. We're going to take a look at the replay, that last shot. Shine trying to get it back to Holloway. Really can. He's got to run the play. Off-balance shot. Holloway still finds a way to get the rebound. Kind of rushes the shot up a little bit, and there's Salvi again. How many times do we have to mention his name down the stretch? <laughs> Billet didn't box out, he just took out. <laughs> Billet just crashed as well, Harris's legs were there and he was trying to get position and the two hit the floor. Well, certainly prior to that shot, as Shine had the ball out front, Holloway tried to get back in position to receive to be the last guy to touch the ball, but Billet was having none of that. Timmy Higgins is over at the table, perhaps checking the amount of time left when Salvi called four times. And in the truck, our producer Ray Tipton is getting the replay to show Timmy. One of those clock questions that you can check, and now he'll report to both coaches to let them know. There was no seeing or hearing a whistle, and as you see, 2.1 will be on the clock. 
timing errors are correctable. That was within the rules. That was not a product of the rule change that happened most recently. Kevin Bannon just found out he has an extra half second. They have the full 94 feet to go. And they can't run the baseline. It is Kent to trigger. Oh, he threw it away! Holloway for the win! Overtime! Oh, my goodness! <laughs> well, Shaheen Holloway disappointed, but it was a good play to step in. Not such a good play by Rutgers. No one to meet the ball. A blind pass by Rashad Kent. Take a look there. Manga really in the way. Jones didn't really come to meet that ball. He was ready to shoot before he got it. Holloway got a good look. You really can't argue with that. You take a look here. There's the clock. Now, again, watch Jones. He's ready to take off, and Holloway shoots the gap. And everything's working for him. Good rotation. He just misses it. Even on the second bounce, it almost went down. Look at Tommy Amaker. Chris Collins standing up there on the sideline, coming out, looking for the win. Instead, five more minutes. Overtime, next. In the most likely, let's see if Rutgers can pull off the upset, Mike. Wow, Rich, my goodness. So number three and number four, along with number five and six, all lose in a three-night span. Perhaps highlights of Rutgers win over Seton Hall next on Center with Dan Patrick and Stu Scott. Shaheen Holloway almost had the buzzer beater. Instead, it'll be five more minutes. Well, Rashad Kent really could not see Dante Jones on that. He was just trying to get the ball up before a five-second count. Shaheen Holloway, great presence of mind, and he's still thinking about it. Hey, man, you got to erase that from the memory banks. So you got five minutes of overtime to play. Uh. Each team gets a timeout when you go to overtime. So Seton Hall has three. Rutgers has one. Dante Jones has the first two of OT. Mike, I think one of the keys here is how much does Seton Hall have left? We talked about the energy they expended to cut the deficit to take the lead, and it seemed as though they kind of wilted down the stretch. One play towards the end, the shot by Greer really illustrated that. And Lane short on a three. I think their legs are gone. Again, Saturday they played West Virginia. Biggest Big East win in Seton Hall history. They won by 31. Monday, they had to go to Syracuse and play. Of course, that game went down to the wire. That game was rescheduled because of the tragic residence hall fire on January 19th. Welcome those of you in ACC country who watched Maryland and Duke. A streak-ending setback. Here in the Big East, we're in overtime. And Greer could not connect for Rutgers. It was a push by Rutgers at the very end of regulation after the Scarlet Knights led for the entire first half. Kevin Bannon's team coming up with the hoops down the stretch to force overtime and they hit the first field goal of OT against Tommy Amaker's Seton Hall team. Extending back over the end of regulation, Seton Hall has not scored while Rutgers has put up the last eight. Now, if I'm Rutgers, instead of playing a passive kind of defense, I'm going to step up a little bit and extend the pressure. Recognize I have a tired team. Don't allow them to catch their breath. All right, change direction. Salvi threw it out. Salvi on the runner. Jump stop for no contact. And two. Timeout, Seton Hall. Well, Tommy Amaker calls that timeout, not only because of the continued run by Rutgers, but because, again, he knows he's got a tired team right now. He's got to do everything he can to give them a blow to let them recoup a little bit. As you see Salvi off, off the block shot, taking it straight to the basket. You see the fans of the Dr. Joel Salvi, the senior. Here's what his coach says about the emotional leader. A, he knows his role. B, he accepts his role and loves it, loves it, and just wants to rebound and defend and do anything he can to help the team win. And, and uh, you know, I'd love to tell you that every kid's that way. It's just not true. And so I don't care whether he wears the headband or doesn't wear it or what haircut he chooses for tonight's game. 
it doesn't matter because I know he's, he's going to give us every ounce of, of, of energy that he has. He's, a, he's just a special kid. A junior college transfer who did not start last year but averaged 13 minutes a game. Started twice this year. He's averaged 22 minutes. He's truly the only contributing senior in the scoring rotation for Kevin Bannon. And he brings electricity and energy and feeds off this uh, crowd that creates one of, if not the best atmospheres in the Big East on a campus. And it's a wonderful story. He recognizes his role. That's what Kevin Bannon said. And you got to be a little different. If you take a look at Joel Salvi, to go out there and just rebound, do the dirty work, that's not the kind of stuff that usually gets on Sports Center or usually gets a lot of acclaim, but it helps you win. Sports Center is coming up next with the highlights of Dennis Rodman's NBA return, John Rocker's day in New York, and a very busy and not as scripted night of college basketball. Dan Patrick and Stu Scott managing the ever-changing rundown. We'll join you when we're done. Seton Hall trying to bank off the most significant win of the Tommy Amaker era when they won at number four Syracuse on Monday in a dogfight with Rutgers now. Holloway on Billet. Billet wanted to travel. Calcane is quiet of late. Rutgers ball, they say no foul. Incidental contact forcing the trip. Calcanis tries to split the defense. Take a look here. It's feet get tangled up. Looks as though Dante Jones stepped in just enough to cause some confusion for Calcanis. Seton Hall scoreless the last two minutes of regulation. The first two minutes of overtime. Rashad Kent inside. 6-0 and 0-2. Kent too strong for Harris inside on the block. Seton Hall's got to peel back and help. Lane out of control. Offensive foul. It is rare that you see the team that celebrates to get into overtime carry that momentum into the extra session. But I, I think what we talked about in that whole second half, the fatigue factor with Seton Hall is really present now. Oh, it absolutely is. And you talk about the team that celebrates. Rutgers was happy enough that they escaped regulation with just a tie. And this crowd has really fueled them. You know, it's really provided them that extra energy, that bounce in their step that they came out with at the beginning of overtime. Although in the same conference, because of the 13 teams in the league, this is the only meeting between these teams this year. They'll meet twice next year when the Big East splits up into two 17 divisions. This is your only shot at your in-state rival. Rutgers trying to milk the clock now. Take a little time off. Make Seton Hall play defense for the full 35 seconds. Where are now? Salvi. The blocking foul on Seton Hall. Mango will be whistled. And when you wear a team down, Particularly on the defensive end, they get to the spots late. And you take a look there, you know, Manga never really got to the spot before Salvi took off. Once he leaves his feet, Manga starts to turn. If he holds his spot, he may get a call. Salvi has put a mark in many of the stack columns tonight, including a career high in the assist. Ledger with five. They were going to take Salvi out for offense defense, but I think Kevin Bannon realizes that's the guy to keep on the floor. He's going to try to get another small man out there to guard the three guard situation for Seton Hall, essentially with Calcanus Lane and Holloway. All eight of overtime. Rutgers by eight, but still plenty of time at 2.15. But you're right. Instead of making offensive defensive change, Kevin Banner recognized that the defense is the offense. Manga crashed. The push was on Salvi, I believe. Yes, it was. And that may be his fifth. Yes, it is. He's gone. 
Listen to this great ovation for Shelby. assist to go with that. Ball on the glass. And there's Salvi mm -hmm. in his inimitable style, which is no style at all. Just go after it. Nice young man who's uh, majoring in television, radio, broadcast journalism, taking some of those classes. No. Yes, he is. You don't think that's a hairdo? Well, that's what I'm saying. I, you're <laughs> kidding me, right? Likes the camera, recognizes a very nice young man. Enjoyed visiting with him over the last couple of years. Mango will have one more. Well, the Duke streak has come to an end. Stu and Dan will have that. And a look at Derek Thomas's impact in the two cities that he called home, Kansas City and Miami. Manga hits a couple. Nice to have the fun in games to temporarily suspend reality, isn't it? Rutgers by six at the two-minute mark. Seton Hall's got to recognize there's still plenty of time right now. There's no need to gamble. There's no need to take silly chances. You play good, solid defense, and you're right where you want to be. You see how much time they have to shoot. Shot clock on the left. And no flow here. Jones takes it all the way. Oh, a foul call as Holloway just went for the strip with two seconds on the shot clock. And that is Holloway's fifth. Well, I'll tell you, that was good recognition by Dante Jones, recognizing the shot clock was falling. He decides to put it on the floor and again, going aggressive to the basket. Take a look here. Here he goes. Splits the defenders. And but for Holloway's reach in, he would have had a nice look at the basket. So actually, it wasn't a bad play by Holloway. Forced Jones to make it from the line. Holloway, two assists tonight to go with his 14 points and six boards. Two free throws. And one more. Coming for Jones. He with 71%. He is second best among the Rutgers regulars. A three possession game as we come up on 90 seconds. Sean can run the show at the point. Calcanus drew the contact and the foul before he could find the open Al Harris. Well, that's what you want. You want the senior hand on the ball to create situations for you now that Shaheen Holloway is out of the game. And Remus Calcanus really does a nice job of breaking down the defense. And we're losing him here by the foul. Dante Jones has just fouled out. He scored 13 on the night. Well, the one thing that's going to happen here is Calcanus will come to the line with no time running off the clock. And he is right up there among the best free throw shooters in the Big East. I don't know what they did tonight, but Khaled El Amin and Albert Mooring for Connecticut combined have missed just one free throw all Big East season. Collard was 30 of 30 coming into tonight. Albert Mooring 25 of 26. Connecticut beat Boston College, by the way, this evening. Calcanus started tonight 30 of 32 in Big East play from the line. He's hit both of his free throws tonight. Well, this is becoming a war of attrition right now. You know, both teams have lost significant players on the offensive end. It'll be interesting to see who's left in minute 30. Calcanus, all four feet, free throws tonight. Five points, 90 seconds. You see, that's a mistake by Lane right there, trying to gamble. You've got to play straight-up defense. They foul Rashad Kent, a 54% shooter. You alluded to it earlier, Len, that Seton Hall's not a good shooting team from the line. Neither is Rutgers at 65%, and Tommy Amaker's going to make him earn a win here tonight. Well, I think with the amount of time left, you know, not to really second-guess Tommy on 
trying to foul this early, but I think you at least give your defense a shot. You know, you lead a parade to the line with a minute 23 and you're only down five. You run a big risk of getting deeper in the hole. Uh, Rashad Kent should have stepped off the line. Okay, they're going to give him a second free throw. If you saw what happened, the defensive players for Seton Hall changed sides of the lane after Kent had the ball. So technically it would be a lane violation. Thus, he gets the two free throw attempts again. Just a small mental error for Seton Hall. So this is the first of two. Fifty-four percent shooter, as I said, and it's a large sample. He's second on this team with a hundred and two free throw attempts in the year. Don't need three if you're the Hall. Shine all the way. Got fouled by Renardo Brown. They can score more points with the clock stopped at 113. And again, a good job of Seton Hall to spread the floor and once again become aggressive going to the basket. Pretty much reminiscent of how they began the second half. Ty Shine has missed all four of his free throws tonight. Four point game. Seton Hall, an overtime loss at Georgetown earlier this year by three. Rutgers' first OT game of the season. We've delayed the start of Sports Center to Dan and Stu as soon as we're done here in Jersey. One possession game at 113. Seton Hall was about to be counted out. Staggering, but still standing. Much better job that time by Lane. Stay in front of Brown. And Kevin Bannon uses the extra timeout that he gained here in overtime to stop it with an even 60 seconds. You'll see a lot of the Pirates coming up here on ESPN. They have a Saturday game against Boston College. Then on SB night, when Big Monday goes to the deuce, it will be Connecticut taking on Seton Hall. Half hour from here at the Continental Airlines Arena. That'll be the first of the three big Monday games that move to ESPN, two for the ESPYs. Then Oklahoma and Eduardo Nahara taking on Nebraska. Followed at midnight by Wyoming and New Mexico. If you haven't seen New Mexico, we've got a 6'4 guard, Lamont Long, who's filling it up at 19 a game in the Mountain West. Always get updated on college hoops at ESPN.com, part of Go Network, go.com. Big Monday presented by Bud Light, ESPN2, on Monday. Only Seton Hall can stop it. They have the arrow, and every foul is two free throws. And if I'm Seton Hall, I'd make sure that Todd Billett doesn't get his hands on the ball. He's a terrific free throw shooter, pretty good ball handler. He's not the guy that you want to foul in the event that you have to, but Shine allows him to get his hands on him. Bill, an 83% shooter, takes a three with 15 left on the shot clock. Kent called timeout, they don't have any. Kent called timeout, they don't have any. It's a technical foul. Seton Hall will get free throws in the ball. A devastating mistake for Rutgers. But once again, it comes to... You know, game management, you take a look at Kent right here. That's why I don't like this play, because it's almost a reflexive play. But you talk about game management, I am positive that Kevin Bannon mentioned it in the huddle. We don't have any timeout. You say it before, well, as soon as the guys come in, and you say it right before they go out on the floor. Somehow or another, Rashad Kent might have been spacing. But you know that good coaches are going to say that. I will repeat what I say all the time when we're together, and that happens. As you see, Seton Hall, no field goals in six minutes. They're going to have a chance to take the lead with the ball here with a couple of free throws, then the possession. That rule needs to be changed so that your next step must come in bounds before you call timeout. It's the only sport on the planet where you can just stop the momentum of the game by calling timeout when you're in trouble like that. It doesn't make any sense. 
Well, it's a bad call for the most part. There are some instances where it changes the complexion sure. of the ball game. There are some instances where it's a good play. But it's become such a reflex situation that guys do it right at the beginning of the game sometimes where you don't really need to waste the timeout. That's why I don't like it. I think, you know, the, the officials, the rules committee treats the timeout situation as to the ball. You know, if it breaks the plane, you got to come down. If it's inbounds or out of bounds. But the bottom line is, you know, if you make it a reflexive situation, you're going to make mistakes like that. Well, Calcanis, who doesn't miss in the Big East, knocks down two. It's a one-point game, and because of the technical, it's Seton Hall ball. Rutgers will get it back. But Seton Hall can take the lead, even though they haven't hit a field goal in overtime. A dangerous pass to Sean, who wants to shoot. And puts the hole in the lead! They were down 63-56. And has scored the last eight. Salvi can only watch in disbelief. He's fouled out. One second difference game in shot clock. Todd go at the freshman. This stunned crowd murmuring. Now they come to their feet. Bernardo Brown. Luis Flores. Offensive foul. That's a tough position to put the freshman Flores in. Timeout Seton Hall. Get organized. They have the lead. Two free throws coming in 17-7 to go. Now here you see Flores driving the baseline. A nice job by Manga. He finally gets one. And Remus Calcanis, congratulatory hug and a kiss. How about the first field goal for Seton Hall in seven minutes by Shine? Well, Ty Shine, we talked about his skills. Not really a point guard, more of a shooting guard. And right there, his skills really served him well. His instincts served him well as a scorer. Game's not over, but if Seton Hall holds on, after the emotional win on Monday, and this game where they let Rutgers come back, they were out of it in overtime, couldn't score and summon up enough to find a way to get back and take advantage of the breaks and opportunities that they were given. What a boosting win it would be for a program on the rise and for Rutgers, a young team that has lost because of certain mistakes in youth. This would be another in the series of crushing losses. Still have to inbound here. Two Calcanus, the great free throw shooter. Got to foul somebody. And they got Calcanus right before he was going to give the ball up. Well, I'll tell you this, though, Mike. If I'm Kevin Bannon, it, it certainly the guys will be down if they lose this game. They'll be down going in the locker room. But there are a lot of good things that he can show on this video that can ultimately lift the spirits of this young team. Their first half, the way they executed defensively, the energy that they showed, you know, those are the things that he wants to continue to replicate. And if he can pick those out, of this game mm -hmm. and reinforce he's going to have a team that's ultimately going to be very competitive as we go towards the Big East uh, tournament. Tim Higgins is doing a nice job here. Each team is trying to steal a timeout that they don't have by chatting and uh, making conversation and delaying substitutions and Timmy got both teams right back out there and said Calcanis has some free throws here. Sports Center's coming up. Let's keep it going here boys. <laughs> Calcanis, 36 of 38 in Big East play this year. 6 of 6 tonight. You know, and Timmy Hagan, he probably knows he's got to go to work in the morning. And Timmy's got another <laughs> game in like eight hours. <laughs> well, it is only a one-point lead. Rutgers will not need a three. They don't have a timeout. They've got to get the rebound if it's a miss. you got to jam the passer. Make it difficult to get it over. Kill it with eight. A three wins, a two ties. Fans to their feet. Kent outside. Back to Bill. He's going to have to shoot. Here's Bill to Flores for the win. No good. And Seton Hall survives. Talked about putting the freshman in situations. That time Lewis Flores with a wide open shot. Good look, good rotation, just a little strong, but excellent defense. We talked about jamming the passer and inbounding the ball. Then they did a nice job of keeping Billet from penetrating to put pressure on their defense. 
For the second time in 48 hours, a character-building win for Tommy Amaker's team that was almost a Rutgers win with a three at the buzzer by Flores. Again, Shine with a nice job to keep Billick from turning the corner, forced to kick it back out to Flores. And Garrett did a great job running out on defense. Hope you've enjoyed it. Good night of basketball on ESPN. All recapped on SportsCenter next with Len Elmore, Mike Tirico. Thanks for watching this presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com. Part of Go Network, Go.com. Don't go anywhere. Dan and Stu have SportsCenter next.